Tom Brand is a billionaire businessman and the owner of a successful company called Firebrand. The company specializes in high-end retail stores and luxury products, ranging from electronics to fashion. However, Tom's workaholic attitude appears to have strained his first marriage to Madison, with whom he has a son named David. Currently, David works as Tom's assistant and the two spend most of their time together. At home, he lives with David, his second wife, Laura, and their daughter, Rebecca. As the movie begins, Tom's airplane, Firebrand, is seen soaring through the clouds. Inside, we find David next to Tom, who's dressed in a skydiving suit and ready to take the plunge. He asks his son to jump with him, but David refuses, saying he's scared. Hearing this, Tom calls him a chicken before jumping out. After a while, he lands on top of his skyscraper, the Firebrand Tower, his greatest accomplishment so far. A crowd of his employees and the press awaits him there. He tells them that the Firebrand Tower, once completed, will be the tallest skyscraper in North America. Hearing this, the press questions him about the Paragon Tower in Chicago, his closest competitor, which is surpassing his building by 60 feet. However, Tom doesn't seem to be phased. He simply belittles his competitor. Meanwhile, the Firebrand staff are seen having a meeting in the conference room within the office. Ian Cox, the manager, appears irritated that everyone's distracted by the building. Tom inquires why the press asked him about Chicago, but Ian simply reassures him that he is undefeated and that his Firebrand Tower is taller. The next day, Tom recalls Rebecca's birthday and asks her what she wants. The little girl insists on having a cat, to which Tom replies that he will think about it. Following this, he goes back to his office and gathers everyone together for a meeting actively seeking their suggestions for gift ideas. David joins in and explains that if Tom wants to show that he really cares about his daughter, he should simply get her what she wants. So, determined not to disappoint Rebecca, Tom gets in his car and heads to a pet store in search of a cat. Soon, he arrives at Perkins Pet Shop, a peculiar and enigmatic pet store. All of a sudden, a cat leaps onto the hood of Tom's car, which startles him. After this, he walks into the store and sees a variety of unusual and exotic cats. However, the same cat from outside approaches Tom and starts snuggling with him. Seeing this, the shop owner, Felix Perkins, strangely says that you don't choose a cat, rather, the cat chooses you. He then informs Tom that the cat snuggling up to him has already used up seven lives. Tom is confused by what this means. But before he can inquire, he hears on the news that Chicago now has the tallest skyscraper in North America, beating New York and Firebrand. Meanwhile, Perkins urges Tom to choose a bowl, and he opts for the one that says, Mr. Fuzzy Pants. He then receives a phone call from Ian, but Perkins cautions him that he might not want to take it. Tom still picks it up, and after a while, he arrives at his tower with a cat, whom he now calls Mr. Fuzzy Pants. There, he meets Ian and inquires if the news report was a hoax. Ian reassures him that they can turn this around, implying that they did really lose to Chicago. However, an enraged Tom accuses Ian of messing up and fires him on the spot. Right then, lightning strikes an antenna at the top of the tower, and Tom and the cat are blown off the building. He begs Ian for help, but the latter simply watches Tom struggle to hang on to the building. A few seconds later, he falls off the side of the skyscraper, but his leg gets entangled in some loose equipment. He's then thrown back into the tower through a window, after which he passes out. As Tom awakens, he sees his physical body lying on a stretcher with paramedics assisting him. Suddenly, he realizes that he, or rather, his consciousness, is trapped in the body of Mr. Fuzzy Pants. After a while, he hears the doctor inform his wife, Laura, that the surgery went off without a hitch. However, he's suffered severe head injuries, and the recovery will not be visible until the swelling in the brain is reduced. Tom tries to call out to Laura and yells that he's inside the cat's body. However, those around him can only hear him meowing and purring. Meanwhile, Rebecca approaches her mom and asks if she can see Tom, but Laura gently explains that her dad is unable to speak with them right now. David also consoles his sister by assuring her that they will go in together to see him. 
Just before leaving, they run into Ian, who lies that he tried his best to save Tom but was unsuccessful. Rebecca then notices the cat in the basket, and upon asking, Laura reveals that Tom got it for her. Just then, Perkins appears before Tom's basket and starts talking to him. It turns out he's a cat whisperer who can hear and communicate with cats. In the next scene, Tom desperately asks how he can get out of this predicament, but Perkins cross-questions how he got into this situation in the first place. He adds that Tom must sort things out soon before his physical body expires and he gets trapped in this cat body permanently. Back at Firebrand headquarters, David overhears Ian telling the others that what's happening to Tom isn't a crisis but rather an opportunity. Later that evening, Madison and her daughter pay Laura a visit. David also arrives home and starts exploring ways to make the Firebrand Tower taller. Meanwhile, Fuzzy Pants pees on Madison's handbag after hearing her talk poorly about him, which infuriates her. The following day, David pays a visit to Tom in the hospital and assures his unconscious body that he has a plan to beat Chicago by adding height and that he simply needs to pitch the proposal to the board. Unfortunately, no one in the board meeting appears to be interested in it. Later that day, Laura comes home and calls Perkins in response to Fuzzy Pants' erratic behavior over the last few days. Perkins agrees to help, but he requests to speak with the cat alone. After Laura's gone, he tells Fuzzy Pants, aka Tom, that he will only be able to revert to his original body if he behaves well. If he does not, his human body will die, and his consciousness will be locked in the cat's body for the rest of his life. Perkins also explains that a well-behaved cat provides love and comfort, something his family really needs. Tom, now determined to escape the cat's body, begins to act like one. Just then, Laura receives a phone call and starts speaking to a guy named Josh. Hearing this, Tom suspects that she's cheating on him. However, unbeknownst to him, the guy is just a real estate agent who's assisting Laura in buying a house. In the next scene, Fuzzy Pants plays with Rebecca to cheer her up. He is determined to be the best cat ever in order to reclaim his original body. His habits eventually make Rebecca suspect that something is wrong, and when she looks up information about cat reincarnation on the internet, she finds out that Mr. Fuzzy Pants is actually her father. Meanwhile, David tells Laura that Ian went behind their back, taking full advantage of Tom's comatose state. When Fuzzy Pants hears this, he sneaks into the legal box that David is carrying to the office. There, he overhears Ian discussing a legal article in which Tom had promised to leave all his shares to David. However, the greedy Ian shreds the agreement, making sure no traces of the article are left behind. Later, Fuzzy Pants knocks down the paper shredder, causing the torn article to spill out. Right then, David enters the room and finds the paper shreds all over the floor. He eventually puts it all together and gets shocked. The next day, Ian visits Laura at their home and comforts her with false truth, claiming that Tom will not come back. However, she responds that Tom still has a chance. She then mentions that she knows Ian doesn't care about them. He's simply suggesting all this in order to take over the company. Later, David brings the article to the Firebrand headquarters and arranges a board meeting. However, Ian reveals that he is not invited to the opening ceremony of the Firebrand Tower. He also claims that David lost his company and now has no influence in official matters. On the other hand, Rebecca carries Fuzzy Pants in a bag and visits the mysterious pet shop, where she asks Perkins if she can return the cat. However, he advises Rebecca to return back if she really wants to see her father, since he's running out of time. After a while, David and Laura arrive at the hospital as the doctor informs them that there's no sign of any cerebral activity, implying that Tom may not awaken from his coma. Rebecca enters the room as well, explaining that Tom's consciousness is in the cat. Meanwhile, Fuzzy Pants, who's still in Rebecca's bag, hears David say he's going to make his first and last jump from that tower. The cat then proceeds to follow David to the tower, but at the same time, Rebecca notices him and tries to call him over by saying, Daddy, in order to prove to Laura. Fuzzy Pants is now torn between staying with his daughter at the hospital, near his body, and following David to stop him from jumping. 
he recalls what Perkins said, love means sacrifice. Thus, he decides to go to the tower in order to save David, sacrificing his one last chance to regain his humanity. In the next scene, David enters the tower via the basement elevator, but Fuzzy Pants remains outside. Just then, Ian spots him and directs security to put him in a sack and dump him away. The guard is about to oblige, but Perkins arrives in the nick of time and saves him, saying it is his cat. The pet shop owner then warns Fuzzy Pants that he's not going to make it and that this was a dumb decision. Nonetheless, he places the cat in the mailbox so that it can get access to the inside and eventually the top floor. Later, the guards see David near the edge of the roof and ask him to step off. However, he completely ignores them and jumps off. The cat also jumps after him while lugging a cable, but unfortunately it snaps, sending Fuzzy Pants spiraling down with his son. But just then, he notices David wearing a jumping parachute and gestures to the link, advising him to pull it. David somehow understands the cat's language and quickly obliges. He then steers the parachute and lands it in the middle of the ongoing party. Wasting no time, he then presents the company's articles of incorporation and declares that he owns 51% of his father's stock. As everyone watches in shock, David fires Ian from the company, ending his reign of terror once and for all. At the hospital, Tom also suddenly awakens, proving that he's made the right choice all along. In the final scene, Ian is walking down the street while on the phone with someone. Just then, he passes by Perkins, who advises him to end his phone call. However, Ian completely ignores him and walks away. The next second, he is suddenly hit by a car, and his consciousness, like Tom's, is transferred to a cat. Perkins then swoops him away to his pet shop. After Tom has fully recovered, he takes Rebecca to the same pet store and asks for a dog. However, much to their delight, Perkins presents them with Mr. Fuzzy Pants who now only has one life left.